Michael, who do you, um, who did you start listening to to, to get your kind of um, singing style? James Brown. James Brown and, I say James Brown and Sammy Davis Jr. Because I like the kind of things they do, like fast music. What did you borrow from them? Well, uh, I do most of his dancing on stage. And I just like the way Sammy sings. Do they teach you anything when you listen to their music? No. I just watch them on television. What do you, um, describe a performance, the, describe the performance that you put on? What I do? Yeah. Uh, well, most of my songs are fast. I mean, what do you put into it? Well, whatever I sing, that's what I really mean. When, like, I'm singing a song. I don't sing it if I don't mean it. Listen, uh, what are you going to be when you grow up, anyway? I can't make up my mind whether to be a jet pilot, an astronaut, or the governor of Georgia. <laughs> Well, Michael, you know, you're, you're so young, you have plenty of time to decide, really. I guess so, Mr. Bono. You've done pretty good yourself. Ah, oh, shucks. Oh, You've been a big hit on television. Well. And in the movies and on records. Well, you know, I, I, I've been lucky, I guess. Yeah. There's only one thing I'd like to ask you, Mr. Bono. What's that? What are you going to be when you grow up? <laughs> You told me not to say kicks, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what he does in his leisure time and pastime and hobbies and whatnot. What do you do, Mike? Well, I, I read a lot. and. Um, what kind of books do you read? Like um, science fiction or just some, the, some of the you know, bestsellers. Like A Night to Remember, The Sinking of the Titanic. And uh, I feed my birds every morning. You have a bird collection? Yeah. All um, kind of different Do you buy birds. them or do you catch them? No, I buy them. <laughs> you buy them, huh? Yeah. What, what are some of the birds you have? Oh, a peacock, um, pheasants, parrots, mm -hmm. nickel bar pigeons. Do they, ever, do they ever peck you? No, not really. Oh. They know me. Do you, um, do you go to a regular school or private school? No, we go to private school. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot different from public. Yeah. Um, I would imagine that there are a lot of um, show business Kids yeah, that go right. to the school, right? Yeah. Who, who are some of the more famous kids that go to school with you? Um, or the, who have famous parents, maybe? Well, Danny Bonaducci of the Partridge family. Uh -huh. and is he a pretty good kid? Yeah, yeah, I guess you could say that. Yeah, he That's is. That's not what you told me a while ago. No, he is. <laughs> uh, he's the one you said gets in trouble a lot, right? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, you didn't want to say that, but you let me say it, right? Yeah, I'll let you say that. Okay. What are you looking forward to in the future, Mike? Um... Recording other artists and going into acting. We get a lot of scripts in, but um, we haven't found the exact script that we want to use. Mm -hmm. So we're picking and deciding. I think you may be a big movie star one day, huh? Yeah, I'd like to give it a try. Yeah, it's a good business to be in. You got the looks, you know. <laughs> Fortunately, I didn't. Uh, <laughs> when, uh, what? <laughs> Do whatever we can. Now, it's almost ironical that, that, that you are starring in The Wiz, the, the film of The Wiz, uh, and, and playing um, opposite or with uh, the lady that really discovered you, Diana Ross. Um, what was it, what did, how did you feel when you heard you got the part in The Wiz, and especially playing with Diana Ross? I was um, very happy because, uh, well, I love the play so much. I've seen it six times before I even knew I was going to be in it. And... Um, I would talk to Diane on the phone. I'd say, you're going to film The Wiz next week, huh? Or, or next month. And she would say, yeah, next thing I noticed, I was in it. And they, they called me. I said, did I want to do it? I said, yeah. So they sent the script. I came up, met everybody. And, and what part are you playing in The Wiz? Scarecrow. The Scarecrow? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> too much. Uh, I love it, too. And so have you, have you started filming that yet? Yes, we've been filming about two months and a half. Yeah. We got about four months to go. Well, this current single that, that, as I said, has been is becoming a huge hit in the States and no doubt will be a hit in Australia called Going Places. I think the one thing 
uh, over the past five years since I've seen you. Michael Jackson's certainly gone places. Yes, and thanks thank for you. being on the show. Thank you. And the idea of being separated from them, does that hurt? No, it doesn't. It, um, because there's other kinds of sounds of music that I love to do. It hurts what is inside of me and it can't get out and it's hidden from the world. When I do those solo albums and I'm doing all kinds of different music, it's wonderful. I feel like I'm accomplishing what I'm supposed to do. And you don't feel guilty or worried about your brothers? No, because they understand. Uh, why, why hide some? Why hide it? Share it. For you. you have something within your records that everybody just loves. Boy, I, I, I couldn't say. I just create it and uh, I'm honored that the public enjoy what I do. I couldn't uh, explain why the anatomy of why it happens. There's a formula? Not that I know of. I, it's my heart. I put my heart in it. You put your heart in it? Yeah. When you go about writing, uh, what happens? Um, songs come at the strangest times. I could be walking uh, through a park or something and it'll just hit you. Uh, it's, it's no set time that I write. They come, I, I wrote a song in the Concord, 58,000 feet in the air, and uh, I didn't have a tape recorder so I had to remember it. And uh, <laughs> I got home and put it on tape, so they just come. Where do you think the uh, gift came from? God. At this age, you're 24? 24? 30. 30? No, 24. <laughs> How, now, I know that you didn't write the video, but you're telling me the story is almost like the story of my life, but you're telling me that it's based on another person. Yes, it is. This kid who went to school upstate in the country or whatever, who is from the ghetto, um, and he tried to make something of his life, and he would leave his old friends behind, and when he came back um, on spring break or whatever, Thanksgiving break, his, friend be his friends became so uh, envious, jealous of him, that mm -hmm. they killed him. But in the film, I don't die, of course. Yeah. So it's a true story that was we had taken from Time or Newsweek magazine. Yeah. And, uh, and he is a black kid like me, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a sad story. But How do we, you, mm -hmm. pardon? How does that make you feel when you see those sad stories? Oh, something like that is very sad because it's all negative, it's wrong. Mm -hmm. I think that's life, to want to grow and become more. And Like you plant a seed and it grows into something beautiful mm -hmm. and it never dies, really. I think people should be that way. You know what, my favorite song on the album is Man in the Mirror. Oh, yeah, I like that a lot. That's, that's my favorite song. Uh, I tend to hold a feeling that no matter what you do in the world, it really has to start with you. It is my philosophy, too. If you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and then make a change. It is a real privilege for me to be able to have this opportunity to send all my fans in the UK a message on what is a very important day. Today of all days, we focus on loving one another and giving. Let's do that, not just one day of the year, but for 365 days. The Heal the World Foundation is now set up. Donations are invaluable, but just as important, let's love one another. Let's forget hatred and turn to those that are suffering, not just today, but every day. Join me in healing the world and making it a better place. Thank you. <laughs> Is that as good as it gets as a performer? Gee. If I say uh, no, I'll sound arrogant. I don't think I'm ever pleased with my performances. Never. And after that performance, I wasn't happy either. So I wanted to do the five spins, then go on the toes and freeze there and just hold it and stay there, you know? And I didn't, but I was angry about that, actually. Real disappointed. And I, I didn't realize I really did well until the next day when Fred Astaire called my house in Encino, raving. He said, I can't believe it, you're an incredible mover. And I was, oh my God, I think maybe I did it well. I hate to say it, but it's like what all songwriters say, it's true, it's like you don't write the song, the song writes itself, and it just kind of falls into your lap. It's like when you say,
gee, where is, did I do this? <laughs> it was that sort of thing. Is, is video the same, or is video more work? Um, kind of. I think so. It's 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 a cousin of the same creative, you know, intent. I think. Um, you you just you let it create itself, really. I know I do. In my opinion, it has to be completely entertaining and have a a sense of um, a linear sense of continuity. As far as um, I like having a beginning and a middle and an ending, so you could follow a story. Um, and not just be a collage of images, you know. And sometimes that's great too. It depends on what the director has a visionary, what he sees really. Well, how much do you put, how much uh, faith or trust, or how, how much of it do you let the director decide? Are you very involved in the concepts? Oh, I, I'm very much involved in complete making and creating uh, of the piece. I mean, it has to be from, you know, my soul. Usually, you know, it's an interpretation of the music, so I would think so, yes. But you've, you know, I'm hearing a radio next door, by the way, so I'm just pick the wrong time and start cranking the tune. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> Every time you're yeah. How you doing, man? How you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you, bro. You get the smile anymore? Of course. I smile a lot. Do you smile when you're in a recording studio like this one doing music? Oh, of course. I love music. Is it nice to get back to the music? Oh, it's fantastic. Because I, uh, it's my life. That's what I do. <laughs> you know, it's wonderful seeing you with the children. That, I think, is the real Michael Jackson that has not been seeing you with your own children. One in diapers, the other two toddlers. <laughs> I don't know how you manage without a nanny. Well, I enjoy taking care of my children myself. It's, it's fun. That's why I had them, so I could take care of them. And uh, it's just it's great relief for me. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's pleasure. It keeps me happy and laughing. And they're wonderful, sweet, innocent children. They really are. I, I saw you as kind of the uh, the arbitrator between the Nickelodeon channel and the Disney <laughs> channel there. there was <laughs> yeah, you, you noticed. You get some really difficult problems to solve yes, there. Yes, yes. But you have such a, a kind of a normal life there. It's it's sweet to see. Thank you. But well, they, they bring me that, the, you know, normality. Tell me, tell me what the children mean to you, your own children. They mean, it's hard to put it in words because they mean everything, the way you would explain how your children make you feel. I mean, they're the world for me. I mean, I wake up and I'm ready for the day because of them. I give them breakfast, I change diapers. Um, if they want to read, uh, we do a lot of reading. We play hide and seek, we play blindfold, and have a wonderful time with them. Everybody's doing a great job. And just continue and believe and have faith. And give me your all, your endurance, your patience your understanding, but it's an adventure. It's a great adventure. It's nothing to be nervous about. They just want wonderful experiences. They want escapism. We want to take them places that they've never been before. We want to show them talent like they've never seen before. So we give you all. I love you all. And we're a family. Just know that. We're a family. That's right. Yeah. Amen. We have to bring love back into the world, to remind the world that uh, love is a Love is important. We love each other. We're all one. It's a message. You take care of the planet. We have four years to get it right, or, it's, it, or else it's irreversible damage we've done. So, we have an important message to give. Okay? It's important, but I, I thank you for your cooperation so far. Thank you. A big thank you. Blessings. Blessings to all. Three, three, Michael. Whoa!